Hey folks, today we're taking a look at the JBL SRX 906 LA. It's a new product from JBL that I was able to use for the first time up in Chicago on a system design and commissioning project. And I wanna share with you that complete workflow, me choosing to select it, integrating it into the design, the tuning data I got in the field, and ultimately how it sounded. There's a few key specifications and uh, features in the product that I really enjoyed working with. So I'm gonna, from a designer standpoint, share those with you. I think it's important to couch any new product review within an actual project and workflow, not just simply unboxing it and blowing pink noise through it in the shop. So here's how it actually performed for me on a real project with a real client uh, with real budget. So the, the integrator I worked with had a good relationship with Harman and wanted to give it a shot. Uh, so I was excited to use it and want to walk you through step by step how I put it work for me in the field and ultimately got a great sounding rig for my client. Let's go. Let me first give you a sense of the project scope, then we'll actually jump into details about the box, the design, the tuning in and of itself. I was hired by Shiloh SDA Church out of Chicago. I designed the system and then they had an integrator put it in. Then I came in at the end to commission and tune the system. The integrator had a great relationship and still does with Harman and was interested in trying out some JBL products. So I had not used the SRX 906 before, it being a new box. And they said, hey, let's take a look at it. And I said, sure, let's go for it. It was within the client's budget. Uh, I preferred with this specific design, as you can see here, this is the, the photos of it before they've done the remodel. I wanted to be able to fly the subs. The SRX series doesn't have subs with flyware. So we opted to use some B18 with it. So these are the pictures I got from the client on the front end. These are the pews. They're eventually going to replace them with chairs, but I need to make sure it sounded great in every seat. This is taken from the balcony. And so this is from looking from the stage out. And so as you can see here, there is a balcony. You need to cover that. Right here is the front house mixed position. They had actually built a booth as well. So I'll show you some pictures of the actual design. So what I opted to do is to do a single center hang. We yanked out the chandelier. And why not a left and right is that these being 120 degree boxes, these are, you know, if we divide the room in half, these are pretty narrow coverage of like, here's this half, here's this half, it's gonna be very long. And so I either needed a box that could get more tighter and focused to do left, right. Um, and so after this amount of trim height, I actually had 31 feet of trim, which is pretty high. And I was able to get the 120 degrees to spread out and just do a single center hang. So this is what it looked like. Again, looking out from the balcony, as you can see, they've added an LED wall, some more lighting, a lot of fun. So here's a closer look at the rig up in the air. This is two VTX B18s, another two VTX B18s. They had a custom mount made from Polar Focus. And then here's the center JBL SRX 906s, and that's 10 of them in a hang. And I was able to get coverage from horizontal perspective, great, and then front to back. And we'll look at that data and design in a little bit. Again, why I have the VTX B18s is that the SRX series does not have subs of flywear and I wanted to fly them. All right, now that we know a little bit more about the project itself, let's look at the actual box just in case you're unfam unfamiliar with it. So again, it's the JBL SRX 906 LA. It is $21.99 MSRP on Sweetwater's website. Uh, Here's a hang of four of them. It's got fly bars, pretty normal line array stuff. Key features is that you can link them together with data cable and they get on a network and they have DSP within them. So again, they're active. You can control them over DSP. You of course can use something separate as well, but if you don't want to, it's all within the box, which is pretty awesome. It's got two six and a half inch drivers and a three inch compression driver design. I think this is a typo. It's a 1.5 inch compression driver with a three inch voice coil. So moving over to JBL's website, here's the box again, and you can go get their user manual and such. There's also the 910, which is the dual 10 inch box. And here are the key specs I want you to know about. You get 120 degree horizontal coverage angle. One of the things I really liked about it is that from a design standpoint, the interclosure angles, you have a lot of options here. So some other line ray boxes that are similar form factor and price point, uh, they end up skipping a few angles. So this one starts with 0.5, you get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So it can go up to twelve, and you're not having to skip six or eight and go from you know seven to ten. Uh, so I like that. So to be able to have that amount of granularity in the design is really nice. And these ship, I think they want an 80 degree crossover when marrying with their subs. 
Thankfully, the BTX B18s has either a 60 hertz or 80 hertz crossover preset, so that ended up marrying nice there. The box comes in at 37 pounds, so not super heavy, not super light, uh, but overall, really clean look and design. Again, I wish I had one here in front of you to kind of show you what's happening, but it's in the air at that church. So a quick recap, dual six and a half inch boxes, a single 1.5 inch compression driver. I think it's actually mounted together to form a single horn. And that's what their marketing literature talks about. 120 degree coverage angle. The 910 series, the bigger ones has 105 degree. So it, you're stuck at 120. Display angles go from 0.5 all the way up to 12 is DSP controllable via network with their software, which we'll jump into a little bit. It has an 80 Hertz crossover, or you can run them full range. Now let's jump into the design. Here I have the, the venue. I'm able to get it drawn, have the floor down here and then the balcony. Then in the mapping section of this software, and this is LAC3, I've got the SRX, SRX series. I got 10 of them and I hung them up here. So I'm able to play with the array frame angle and get them to where I want, the inner splay angles. And also within here, I can click on this and adjust the array filter. So this is a built-in DSP to bring down the entire array size. So if you have a few amount of boxes in the hang, you might want to get more out of it. If you have a lot of boxes, you can bring it down. And I'll show you where I ended up with in the field a little bit later. And on this bottom box, I ended up using the throw distance compensation filter to shade it down a little bit. Again, this is just the design. It did something in the field. And that was on that bottom box. Since it's closer to everyone, and then I did a little bit on the ninth box and the rest of them I left flat. So I'm able to look in advance what the prediction is going to be. And here at the floor, I've got these four receivers and then these two up top. And that is what I'm looking at here in the measurement data. So if I can, I don't know if I can make this bigger or not, but I was able to get all of these tracking at a similar place, which is what I'm looking at throughout the entire audience front to back and with them looking similar. And the design philosophy was, okay, let's get a little bit of overshoot on the back and maybe could have done a little bit more and let's get even spacing between each of these boxes. And again, that's where it came into. I liked having the amount of granularity and being able to jump in in single degree increments, which is very nice. Uh, so they got a little bit tight here on the bottom, but again, we can use uh, some high shelving to shade down the high frequencies there. So this looked good from a prediction standpoint. I didn't have any wild variations at each of these. And I also had uh, this, these one, two, and three pros placed on the stage to show me any energy that was coming back on the stage. So let me hide those so I can show you the difference. But let, let's just compare microphone six at front of house to microphones one, two, and three. And three has the most amount of HF energy and the others are a lot lower. Uh, after sound checking several of the vocalists in the band, I really didn't have any trouble with feedback uh, or game before feedback, so I felt good there. So that is the design in LAC. And let me show you the line diagram. They had an SQ7 at front of house going to an Allen Heath GX4816, and I decided to run it full range. So we had a spare output just in case they run it, wanted to run matrix or aux fed subs, but we just kept it a spare and run it full range into the unit. So I had an AHM, AHM 16, and I had that in front of it because we had separate subs and separate mains as far as amps and processing. It's not an integrated ecosystem. So I wanted to have that in front of it just in case they added a lobby feed or maybe some side fills and I can control that separately. So those were connected together. The AHM 16 has eight in, eight out. So output one Phoenix uh, connector male XLR to the 906 hang. I wanted to have four zones, an ABCD zone. So that was boxes one through three, four through six, seven and eight, and nine and 10. So zone of three, zone of three, zone of two, zone of two. And that way I'm able to process them differently. Output five fed the amp for the VTX B18s. So I had a single input passing it out to all four subs, which each had their own dedicated output to the VTX B18s, and then top house left, bottom house left, top house right, bottom house right. Uh, and you may be asking why we had them spaced or separately. I'm okay with them being separate because actually bringing them apart a little bit narrows the beam for this long room. And my crossover is at 80 Hertz, so I was comfortable pulling that far apart. And we didn't have a whole lot of real estate down on the floor and it just simplified cable runs to have them all running in the same place. 
Uh, so I thought this worked out really nicely. You may be asking, how come there's no horizontal coverage map in Ease? Well, I don't have the full version of Ease, and that's the only way you can use the GLL file from the SRX 906 LAs. So I basically built a proxy system in Map3D with some Lena boxes and was able to verify that yes, on 120 degrees, that would make sense and be wide enough. I could also use Bob McCarthy's lateral aspect ratio calculation. And with this amount of throw distance from the bottom box with the lateral aspect ratio of 120 degrees, uh, ended up being about 52 feet wide of coverage, which is how wide the first row was. So we were in good shape there. Again, I said we could always add some little small side fills right here on the walls if they felt like they needed some extra umph. But after walking it and listening to rehearsal and reference tracks, I felt like they're in really good shape. Um, and they might be taking away this pew anyway and rearranging the chairs. So I felt good uh, handing off a system that had this. Okay, now let's move on to tuning. I'm gonna show you my smart data as well as my processing settings. So I divided the array into these four zones. So in between that one here, and then this box of three right here, and then I had another one at front of house, and then did move the microphone a little bit forward to look at here. So those were my measurement positions front to back, and I went on axis with the boxes. These chandeliers <laughs> were a little bit pesky. This one actually blocks sight lines to front of house. They are going to pull it out eventually, but just knowing that at front of house, that's what's going on. So I actually moved the microphone off axis just enough to get line of sight to the array, but things still tracked very nicely. So if I open up smart here, I did a mic verification. And once I verified my mics were working and all the boxes were working correctly. This is what I had as far as front to back level. So this is the array unprocessed except for the 80 hertz high pass filter on each box. So green is my A measurement, which is in that balcony. And then working towards the front, front of house, middle of the floor, and then the front row. So we see the slight level increase front to back, but we can see a total delta front to back. If I increase this one, one, two, three, four dB is front to back delta, which, which is less than six dB, which is a good shape. I'm also encouraged by the fact that we're all, they were all making a similar shape totality wise. So I'm not gonna have to manhandle this array to do what I want. So that means great, I did decent with the design. If I hold shift and click here at 1K, this is them all normalized and we can see that there is in the middle of the room is where we actually have the most amount of low mid buildup, not the closest to the array. So that was interesting to me. But what I'm gonna do with the processing now is to use macro EQ or across the entire hang to bend it to my desired target curve, which is this white trace right here. And that's what I did. So I had an Allen Heath AHM 16 in front of it. So on this zone, which is the entire array, this is the EQ that I used. So I use that to bend it uh, the entire array to get from where I started up here. And let's go ahead and look at that. I'm gonna look at the pre-EQ average, drag that up here, up here at the top. And now I'm gonna show you what it looked like after I applied the macro EQ. So these are these traces. I'll take out the average. I'll normalize it to 1K, normalize it to 1K, and this is where I ended up. So again, just with that EQ across the entire hang, that's where I was able to get it with, uh, my, with my target curve and get it there. So here's the thing. Do I need to do any high frequency shading? No, <laughs> they're all lining up. So that, that was one of the most impressive things to me is that with the design, I didn't, I had four different zones to play with and I actually had per box shading if I wanted it to with the array, uh, the throw distance compensation and I didn't use it. So I was really happy about that, that I was able to put that into play. So I uh, got the array there and then now I added in the subs. So here's what it looked like. Uh, and that's where I ended up with, with no trace offset. They wanted the subs pretty hot. So you can see <laughs> that way up there. So here's my target curve against that. Normalize it all to 1K. And this is where I ended up. That was the tuning process is put microphones front to back, use macro EQ across the entire thing. I could have done this within the, the JBL software, but I opted to do it with the, within the AHM. And that's where I got it. Going back here, the B18s 
had to do kind of a weird curve there. They had a lot of low frequency, like 40 hertz energy, but they fell off pretty quickly at 80 hertz. So I added some back to get the hand off a little bit cleaner. And I shaded down those 5 dB compared with the mains. And I still had them plenty hot. Uh, uh, looks like here almost 20 d 21 ish db if i uh smooth it out a little bit above my mains so they have of course can fine tune that see if they want their subs that hot but that's what we ended up with what they wanted with the tonality of the system now that we talked about actually tuning it how did it sound so this room doesn't have a lot of treatment and that was one of my concerns if you will is having a rig this high in the air with this reverber of a space and uh, about the, the the direct uh to reverb ratio uh but it actually sounded clear as a bell it actually sounded a little bit brighter than it measured so here's a fun picture of me tuning it here at front of house uh where i had so it it sounded great i i felt like it was brighter than it measured so if it were my rig I might have taken a high shelf at 1K and brought it down a little bit, depending on how my mix that night was translating. But overall, especially in church world, most uh, mixes end up a little bit darker than they need to be, at least in my experience. So I'm okay with having a PA that's a little bit bright to help that out. They had a separate broadcast desk mixing the live stream. So I'm okay with those worlds feeling a little bit different, uh, but it sounded great. And when I walked to the very front of the room, and, and went here to these pews, I felt like the clarity was maintained, even though they were off axis in uh, the, the, the worst seats, if you will, as far as coverage goes, but they still sounded great. So the 120 degrees really did hold up. And even when I went to the balcony, was here at the, the very back, this is actually taken from the middle of the balcony, uh, it was still very clear. So I liked the box, it sounded great, it, delivered on what it I asked it to do. The prediction software was accurate. Uh, the only thing that the biggest discrepancy was I had to pull out a lot more low mids with the array size uh, than what was predicted here, but not a big deal. This is pretty normal uh, for the size of array. Let's do a recap and then we'll land this plane. Overall, the JBL SRX 906, I was very impressed with it. It's a great sounding product. Uh, the key features that I really like the most is that as it held up well over its 120 degree coverage angle, it did sound a little bit brighter to my ears than it measured, but that's, I would like to do more venues and more shows with it before I make that a definitive statement about the product. Uh, the software was easy to use within Line Array Calculator. I opted to use a processor in front of the array instead of using everything within the box, but when I did mess with it, it was still pretty easy to use. I also like the amount of interplay angles between the boxes. You go from 0 0.5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, all the way up to that. So that's very nice to have the amount of granularity. I would like to use the 910s on a show to, just to see if the uh, the bigger driver, the more air displacement, and the horsepower you get from that will hold up and be well. Uh, I do wish JBL would have added a flyware option to their subs. But I understand a lot of like mid-level shows, that's not really an option anyway to fly subs. So I, I kind of get it. Uh, but again, marrying them with the VTX B18s worked well after using some EQ on those subs to get it to hand off well to the 906s. All right, so if you've used these boxes, I would love to hear your opinion on them below. Let me know if you saw anything in my process or have any clarifying questions about the boxes. Overall, impressed with it. It's a great product. Happy to use it again on upcoming designs. My name is Michael Curtis. I love helping you get wonderful results out of your sound systems and venues and shows. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.